Good afternoon and welcome to San Antonio, Texas here. As you can see from the field conditions, we have had a bit of rain in the area, to say the least. Millsaps will be kicking off. Sorry to get on so late. A truncated version of our broadcast today. Returning the kick for the Tigers will be Michael Edmondson. Edmondson, the sophomore from Holly Lake Ranch and we are underway here, early action. As the Trinity offense will be set to come out, Trinity on the season one and one, having defeated McMurray 44-0 on the road in Abilene before dropping a close one to Harden-Simmons 42-33. Harden Simmons ranked number 10 at the time, moving up to number 8 this week. The handoff to start the game will go to Evan McDowell, and he moves forward for about a yard and a half. They might give him two. They may say second and nine. As we welcome everybody in for this Saturday, absolutely miserable conditions here in San Antonio, and... I'm sure most of you are thinking at home that should make for a terrific viewing experience here watching a game the way it used to be played. I can tell you from walking the field earlier that the the site you saw on kickoff and the site you see there around the 40 is pretty indicative of the field. It was like walking on water as we moved around down there. Everything was completely squishy and not a firm spot for footing to be found. As the five-yard delay of game penalty or false start. It's going to push Tigers back to second and 14. McDowell with the handoff. Breaks one tackle, finds up the middle, and he's close to a first down here on second down. And it'll be third and short. And you can tell from the backside of McDowell, you can't even see his number anymore. And that's just second play of the game. Hurry up offense for the Tigers. And a flag comes in as the handoff once again goes to McDowell. Under center is Timmy Ware, the junior quarterback out of New Kearney, Texas, making his first start. And it'll be a, looks like on Millsaps, penalty on Millsaps. They're going to say offsides. So it looks like he lined up in the neutral zone, maybe called for encroachment. And it will be an automatic first down. They'll move the chains. And minute 15 here into the contest, Trinity crosses midfield. That's Ware back there with McDowell in shotgun. A left-handed throwing Ware throws to Adam Levine, and that one is incomplete. As Levine tried to get underneath it, but unsuccessful. Looks like more of a wide-out package going in for the Tigers as Cash Crane enters. He'll be split out to the left along with Chris Stewart. And it'll be Levine near side here on the right. McDowell in the backfield. Ware throwing up over the top. He's got Levine wide open if he wants him. And he's going to break the tackle. And that will go for a touchdown for the Tigers. 49 yards from Ware to Levine. And early action here. The Tigers take the 6-0 lead. As we see the replay here, nice play action fake, but just a beautifully thrown ball from Ware. Finds Levine in stride. And easy goings after Tommy Levine made that one. You the look here for the extra point. Jonathan Reyes sets up. He missed his first one last week. Footing's going to be an issue all day today. And fantastic job from Jonathan Reyes as he splits the uprights. And Millsaps allows a touchdown here on their first possession. And Trinity quickly marching down the field. Wasn't much of a kickoff to start. And Tigers took advantage of the good field position. A couple of runs from Evan McDowell. And then they found the pay 
pay dirt with the touchdown. Tommy Levine picking up 49 yards on that completion. 61 yards on the drive. McDowell rushed for 12. And 61 yards through the air, uh, or excuse me, of offense. 49 of that through the air, 12 yards rushing, and 5 yards coming from penalty. So drive start at the 34-yard line. And Tigers, a couple of quick plays into the end zone. A little pooch punt there, or a pooch kick off there, and it'll be fielded and immediately run out of bounds from Millsaps. And that was Donovan Johnson from Lake Charles fielding the ball and then immediately getting out of bounds. Listed as a linebacker, so more of an up-blocking position, but he had to field it there. It's the type of kickoffs we expect to see here is Get a look at the live action there. That in between the 40 and the 30 right there is almost just pure dirt. And we'll see how things progress here in San Antonio. I thank everybody for joining us as we are underway. We're early in the first. Flag comes in late and pass complete to Nash McClellan from Chance Clowers. Flowers, the senior quarterback from Monroe, Louisiana. And legal formation as it was McClellan covered up, according to the umpire. So it'll be first and 15 now for Millsaps. Clowers under center. Quick strike. And they get most of the yardage they needed back to get the first down as that one is out to Ty Durham. Wide receiver, senior from making a homecoming from Geronimo, Texas, just down the road here. So it'll officially be second in. Less than one, but they'll make it second and one. Out pass goes far side. Pass complete, so two for two on the day for Clowers, and that was to J.D. Cook, the junior, getting the yardage he needed. Previous pass to Durham for 14. And this one for six, so two for 20 now for Clowers. And short pass once again. That one once again to Ty Durham, his second catch of the day. Would not be surprised to see that be the objective for both teams. A couple of short passes. See whatever is open. See whatever can be done, especially outside the hash marks. Everything inside is going to be completely torn up. And then see what's available outside where there is some grass on the field and then eventually just take a shot downfield. Clowers rolls to his right, and that one's going to be thrown just wide. And he had J.D. Cook on that one, but it'll bring up third and short, maybe third and two, as Millsaps will be tested here for the first time. Rain starting to fall once again. Apologies for the, the specs on the camera doing the best that we can it has been absolutely pouring here throughout the day rained all night and into the morning and the handoff goes on the draw and that'll be a first down for Andrew Warren senior for Motion Springs Mississippi and the clock will run as a first down for the majors their second of the game as we approach five minutes into this game Substitutions being made. Millsaps 2-0 on the season. They defeated Bellhaven 18-3 on the road before shutting out Westminster 35-0 at home last week. It's Warren again. 
finding his way forward. Keeps getting some movement, and that's going to go for about a five-yard gain. So it'll be second and five for Millsaps. And Andrew Warren, back-to-back -back carries now. And so his last carry officially for one. This one looks to be for about five. Handoff once again to Warren as he scatters to the right. As comes close to that first down line. I don't have a good line of sight on it, so we'll see what the officials say. I'm going to mark it just short, so it's going to be third and one. Warren will depart, and in comes Fritz Walker the third. Sophomore. Just whatever. That one's moved forward for a few yards and another first down for Millsaps. off to Walker as he moves forward, but I don't know if he even got back to the line of scrimmage. The official is going to be marking himself maybe a foot. Might have gotten 12 inches there. Now they're actually going to push him back half a yard. And so it'll be second and 11. As the Tiger defense looking to make a, a stand here. Millsap's doing a good job of moving the ball down the field. A couple of third down conversions. Clowers has two out to his right, one to his left, up back and goes deep. And that's a wounded duck on the throw. And they're going to call Trinity sidelines wanting a holding call on the receiver far side. I believe that was Jean Bourgeois and or Borges. And I say Borges was holding the attempt to make the interception. Um, when I said wounded deck, by no means am I making light of the attempt there. It's just that it is almost impossible to get a handle on the ball. As you see, Clower is going to the glove, comes up, now gets a spiral out to number five on the far side, and that is complete over to Brandon Stockroll. And Stockroll makes up a lot of ground and it'll make it fourth and maybe four, fourth and three. No surprise Millsaps coming out here and staying with it. And stock roll wide open on that play. Able to get about seven yards on the completion. So fourth and three officially here as Clowers has Warren on his backside, but he's going to throw. Comes away, and that one is caught. Almost thought it was intercepted because the jersey is completely dark. You're just looking at light and dark jerseys, and the completion made to 82, and that's J.D. Cook with the first down. Glanced over, and all I saw was just a complete one-color uniform, and I thought he had thrown that right to Trinity as both teams have white lids. And that tells you that by the end of this game, we're not even going to know who has the ball here. And Warren, hopefully okay on that play, loses his footing completely as the tackle comes in. And that was made by number 43 for the Tigers. And that's Jeremy Harris, the freshman from Richardson, Texas. I'm going to say it was Cameron Beaver on the tackle. Apologies there. As the rain is coming down with more authority here. Warren up the middle, met by a trio of Tigers. 55-44 with the main tackles there. So nice play by Stargill, Selvin, and 
the reigning SCAC, or excuse me, the SAA Player of the Week, Kevin Boudreaux, and Boudreaux, Boudreaux on the tackle. An absolute crazy one windfall here. Try to describe the action the best we can as we are losing cameras on this. Clowers up top, has a man wide open, and it's just off the shoulder pad. And that one intended for number 11, Ty Durham, had him wide open in the end zone and just played it a touch short, and it was off the shoulder pad. Bring up fourth and 11. So Millsaps will change the package up slightly. Split wide on the right. Single receiver on the left. It's number 26 in the backfield. He's got a clean shirt on. I believe it's his first touch. Corner end zone to number 15. And no flag on the play as that one falls incomplete. So the defensive stand for the Tigers on fourth down. And the impressive drive from Millsap squandered here late. He did have a chance to score on that play on third down. But it'll be Trinity back with the ball as we get, <coughs> pardon me, another look at this throw. And just and his receiver there, Borges, I think just had nowhere to go on that. Hand off to Evan McDowell. He's got room to run. Skirts through, slides for about five yards, but I think the run was for nine, so it should be second and one. Depending on where they mark the ball, they may have given them the first down. They did, so a 10-yard run for Evan McDowell. I guess a false start on Trinity. So it'll now be first and 15 for Trinity. And it's again Timmy Ware back there for the Tigers, making his first start. Had a 49-yard touchdown pass earlier. And timeout to Trinity here. As 5.13 left in the first, the Tigers will take time. We'll stay here with you on video. I'll take a momentary break, and we'll be right back in just a moment. And welcome back as we got a good look at the scoring play so far. 49-yard where to Levine touchdown pass. That happened early on the Tigers' first possession. And as we will do everything we can to keep these cameras dry. The, the rain coming in from the east, we're set up on the west side, so that means the water is just going to come straight in. Flag down on the play as McDowell skirts away for about a yard. And I'm going to say holding on the Tigers. If accepted, that's going to make this second and I believe 25. So they want to push him back. So first and 25, I beg your pardon, first and 25. That pushes the Tigers back inside, I think, to the 16-yard line. So 
Levine out to the right, two to the left. McDowell with Ware in shotgun. Draw play to McDowell, and he's tripped up slightly, and he was down before the ball skirts out. And so not a bad first down play here, trying to get McDowell, and just tripped up right there. And it was by number 24, Millsaps. That's going to be Steele Lyles, a linebacker senior from Calhoun City back in Mississippi. This clock ticks under five, almost four minutes left here in the first quarter. I believe that was a draw play to Chris Stewart. Uh, excuse me, Charles Davis, number 23 for the Tigers. So third and long here for Trinity. Davis back there with Ware. He's got two to his right, two to his left. Now Davis goes to the right. Ware comes back, throws left. And Millsaps is all over it. And once again, that uh, was Steele Lyles with the tackle immediately as the pass was caught. Bring up fourth down in about 20. Uh, Trinity right now just hoping that they can punt the ball back to the line to gain. As Davis had taken off to the right and immediately the Tigers set up to play to the left and nobody comes through to block. Still Lyles and he's all over that play. Back to back tackles from Lyles helping the majors out there. Punt it away, and fair catch from Millsaps. So TJ Renazeski with the punt, and it was Zach Henley with the fair catch. And wise decision there as three Tigers were ready to try to cause a change of possession on that play. Millsaps comes back out for their second possession. 2.32 here as the drive starts. And it's going to be a flag on Trinity. They're going to blow the play dead. And I've seen that as a new rule where instead of giving the free play on Offsides like that, they're looking to blow the play dead, give the five yards, and move forward. Take some of the advantage away from the offense. Like one of the rare times you're going to see that they try to take the advantage away from the offense. So first and five, Flowers under center. He's got trips to his right, and it's going to be a draw play. And all over it in the backfield <laughs> was Trinity Seoibo. And Seoibo almost took the handoff himself. Blew past the offensive lineman and with a nice wrap-up right there. That's going to make it second and officially seven. Just from how deep they were, it felt like they were much further back than that. Run scampers away, and I think they're going to pick up the first down here. If not, it's going to be very close. And that was... Walker on the run. I'm going to say they must have spotted it on the far side because the near side referee here 
I'm looking right down the first down marker. He was about a foot off of it. So now officially third and a yard. Clowers throws. That one's going to be too far over the outstretched reach. I believe that was Cook again. Uh, maybe, maybe McClellan on that one just could not pull it down. Millsaps will come into punt. This will be Andrew Bird, the sophomore kicker. Nice little end over end on that one. And taking it for the Tigers. Losing possession and fortunate for Trinity to get it back. Millsaps had it in their hands. And Trinity comes up with the recovery. I believe that was 20 on the recovery. So on the return was Nick Hubber, and he fumbled it. Millsaps had it for a moment there with number 29, and then Phil Maysfield with the recovery, saving the Tigers. Otherwise, Millsaps is in business inside the 10 if they don't just pick it up and score. I think that's what Dylan Higgins might have had in mind, an unfortunate break for him. McDowell shakes off one defender and then rolls up onto a second. And he gets out of the own shadow of the end zone there for Trinity. It'll be second and six <coughs> as we approach 48 seconds here in the first half. Or excuse me, in the first quarter. see what the result here is. I'm going to say third down turn recovery, so it'll be third and 11. My view was completely blocked. And well, there's some sunshine for you as this crazy day in San Antonio continues. Let's bust out the sunshine here after it's been pouring down rain for the past five and a half hours. And that is the end of the first quarter. And so Trinity with a third and 11 to start the second quarter, but had a 49 yard completion from Ware to Levine to put them up early seven, nothing. And we'll be back in just a moment here with the start of the second quarter. Welcome back as we get a look at the first quarter stat sheet. 80 total yards for the Tigers, 59 for Millsaps, 50 in the air from Trinity, but again, 49 of that was on the touchdown play. Time of possession favoring Millsaps as they have taken up a bit of time. But Trinity's big play has them leading on the scoreboard. Be a draw to Davis. And the ball comes loose. Are they going to rule him down? Yes. So fourth down, and the Tigers will punt.
short putt. They get a considerable roll, roll for the Tigers and just cross midfield. So that's where Millsaps will take over there at the 49. So short field to work with. And let's see what they have ready on their third possession. The block on the far side. Absolutely no footing to be found here on this field at this moment. Clower's back. Draw play and a lot of room to run there for the majors. Will be Quinton Oliver, freshman running back from Richmond, Texas. on the snap and Clowers will just jump on top of it and again I mean sort of what we were expecting as this day progresses to Oliver and missed tackles from the Tigers. Oliver still running, still down the sideline and eventually forced out. Quentin Oliver making a nice little play out of what should have been a few yard loss. And see the first, first tackle probably just because you can't get a good grip on him. And then as he moves down the field, it'll be Second, or excuse me, third and about seven, maybe six, somewhere in there. Six or seven yards to go here on third down. The throw, and you know, look for a flag on that one, but that ball was well behind the receiver. It was a hold there from Christian Mata, but it was after the ball had already gone past. So Millsaps is going to attempt to punt this one away from 35 yards out, maybe pin Trinity back deep, try to win the field position game at this point. And a little pooch punt there from Millsaps and works nicely. They probably wanted it to be inside the 10, but they'll take it about the 15, 16 yard line. We look around the SAA scoreboard. As we get a quick replay at the, the pooch punt there. Yeah, it's Barry out ahead of Rhodes, 28 nothing in the first quarter. And also in SAA play is Swanee and Austin College still tied up 0-0 just starting the second quarter. So Ware hands off. And taken once again from McDowell. Lineman down for the Tigers, and that looks to be Joel Holmes. Preseason All-American offensive lineman senior for the Tigers. Holmes from Houston. And it's one of the things you worry about when you when you play on a field like this is just having the proper footing. Looks like he's been able to 
Maybe gingerly put some weight onto his legs, but he's walking off. That's a good sign. Hopefully he can get it stretched back out and no major damage done. Tigers look at second and ten. Tigers had that one pass early. McDowell scampers ahead. I believe that's going to be good enough for a first down, depending on the spot, and they say yes. And Tigers had that one pass early for 49 yards, still just 50 on the day for them. They have been mostly handing the ball off. Evan McDowell taking a huge chunk of those. And six for 32 yards. Excuse me, now seven for 42. McDowell, Stewart split to the right, and he'll take it on the reverse, and Millsap's not fooled by that one. Coming up to make the play initially was Liam Ben Sephora. And Ben Sephora keeping his position in the backfield. Stewart nowhere to go, and it'll be second and 11 or 12. I say officially 11. Hand off again to McDowell. Has room to run. And met there by number 29. And that is Dylan Higgins with the tackle, making it third and four. Tigers now with 100 yards on the day. Ware looks to pass. Now he looks to run and don't think he had a good decision either way. Millsaps all over that one. A couple of guys jumping up in there for the tackle. As we attempt to make sure our sound is working correctly. The fourth and one, so Ware almost got to the first one before Massey and Coloma with the tackle, and then not much he can do on that one. And the tackle laid on by number three. And I think that's Massey again with the big play. So he stops the first down run from Ware, and then after the misplayed Misplayed snap there. Not much they could do, but then pretty much form tackle to take down the Tigers. And it will be Millsap's ball in the red zone as they start this drive. They haven't been able to do much inside the 30-yard line. Trinity has had them stall out on a drive already today. New quarterback in for the majors. This will be Cameron Jeffrey. If Jeffrey steps back, looks to the end zone. That's going to be a flag in the end zone. Easy call. Comes up questioning it, but uh, he never looked back, and he kind of pushed the defender away just a little bit. as the defender came forward on that one. I believe that'll be a half the distance penalty. And 
beg your pardon, by rule, the ball is going to be placed on the two. The substitution's going in. Now the quarterback for Millsaps will be Ty Durham. He lines up under center. And look for him to maybe roll forward here as the wide receiver takes the snap from underneath. He's going to hand it off. And breaking outside and finding the end zone will be Walker. And Millsaps is a PAT away from tying the game. Brought Durham in, take the play from center, and they hand it off to Walker, and he sprints left. And Millsaps, be number 81 on the PAT attempt. Or excuse me, 91 on the PAT attempt. It'll be Hunter Sellen, and Sellen's kick is good. We are tied 7-7. And a little bit of skirmish looking to break out. And both, both teams quickly in there trying to get their guy away from, from anything. There's look at the PAT and then the beginning of the skirmish there. Looks like it was just a couple of guys down on the ground. And got up a little bit contested. So we are tied here. Barry still leading Rhodes 28-0, and Swanee and Austin still deadlocked at zero apiece. All the Cats currently playing in this A are at home today. So you got the Lynx of Rhodes, Swanee Tigers, and Trinity Tigers. And then the Hendricks Warriors will be at home hosting center. That kickoff set for about 20 minutes from now. We'll try to keep you updated on what's going on in the rest of the league. Yeah, kick off ready for Millsaps. It'll be Bird to kick off. Andrew Bird sends down a line drive, goes deep. I believe that's Stewart with the pickup. The double check. He runs into his own guy. Still moving. And that was number 28 for the Tigers. I believe that was Edmondson back to back to field the kickoff. He ran into his own guy here. to live action. <laughs> so we're back for the Tigers as they start about their 25 yard line. Hand off to Davis and the Tigers will get maybe two on that play. Second and eight. Hurry up offense. Another handoff to Davis. And it's just got nowhere to go. Millsap's doing a great job of containment there. You get a good look at Styles there. He's completely covered up on the front half side. Let's get a good look at number 49, David Gregg. He's Or excuse me, that's number 18. Still can't read these numbers at this point. 18, that's Christian Roberts, whose backside is completely illegible. Ware dumps it off to Davis. Going to try to make the defender miss. Can't do it. And Drew Hopkins all over that play on the tackle. So it'll be fourth down for the Tigers. And they will look to punt away. Momentum now shifting completely over to Millsap's side. So they've just scored 
tie the game at seven. And they force the three and out here from the Tigers. Trying to be looking to make sure they can get the snap down. And a good punt sent away. It's going to be fielded and a fair catch. And Millsaps will take over about the 32 yard line as we return. And let's say officially the 33. The 2018 Millsaps Hall of Fame class was recently announced. We'll touch on that here in just a second as it's going to be Clowers back in. That quarterback missed the last drive completely, so we'll see what they've got here for him now. And that one's batted down. Yenu with the deflection. That ball. So Yebo with knocking it up in the air, could not find it. Otherwise, that ball had so much hang time that he might have been able to run back underneath it. The class of 2018 Millsaps Hall of Fame inducting the 07-08 men's basketball team. And a couple of baseball players, a couple of basketball players, but Chuck Edwards from the class of 95 football player. And... Congratulations to the friends and family of Juan Joseph, class of 2009. Many Tigers will remember Juan Joseph as just very special competitors. That pass is going to be lofted. I'm going to throw a flag, and I'm not sure what's going to be called here. I'm going to see what happens. Millsaps ran into the Trinity defender, and I think that's what Trinity is trying to say. They're looking for help from the back judge. We're going to get together and talk about this one. We'll see here. That pass was thrown deep, and I guess you could say he came up. And you could argue that he impeded the progress. I thought maybe Millsaps had taken a step towards the Trinity player, but watching it again, the argument could be made for impeding the progress of the receiver. So Millsaps will get the pass interference call here. Crowd not liking it. You know, feeling the ball was thrown over the top, but I think we got a good look at that replay. You can definitely make the argument for the flag. We were saying there were a couple of games that Joseph had started here almost a decade ago. Just an absolute fantastic quarterback and great team leader. That's going to be a fumble and recovered by Trinity. The backwards pass leads to a fumble. It's going to be Maysfield on the recovery. And Tigers, after the pass interference play and losing a bit of momentum, that one just slipped out of the hands of Clowers. And Maysfield takes it away from Warren. And Trinity now with a chance to take over deep in their own territory here as they're going in. Ball. I believe they're going to spot it off a 31. A quick handoff. Evan McDowell. Might have been a hold, didn't see any flags, and it was just going to scamper for maybe a yard gain. Halfway through the second quarter here, as we approach halftime, now seven minutes to go. 7-7 seven, seven game. It has been a battle of field position for the most part. And a couple of key turnovers and stalled drives. Two touchdown plays on the day. And scampering around. 
and trying to make something of it and really can't is going to be Timmy Ware. I think the, the call might have been a good time for it. I just don't think he saw anybody open downfield. Third and 11, trips to the right, four receiver set. McDowell back there with Ware. The high snap, that's on the ground, and he's lucky to get it back, and he hurt his leg. That might be, I don't want to speculate, but that leg was planted, and he immediately reaches for the high ankle. Head trainer Mark Powell quickly out there. Not good news for Trinity. And this is the one thing when you play on a field like this that you hope to avoid is just injury to players. And you don't get a chance to get good footing. And then the worst part is, is when this ground being so squishy, if your foot gets stuck in it, it's not going to give like you normally have your foot give on turf. And it looked like that might have been what happened there with wear. 546 here, second quarter. Be fourth and 19 when we resume. They're still down, tending to wear. Get up and see if he walks under his own ability or if he's going to be completely helped off. They're going to help him off. Unfortunate for the Tigers. Austin and Suwani are on the board each 7-7 seven, seven score there. Just about four minutes to play in the second quarter. And with about nine minutes to play in the half, Barry, number 18 Barry, all over Rhodes, 35-7. to seven. That was the punt for him. Trinity fields it cleanly in a nice little pooch punt. The fair catch called for and made. And right about the 13-yard line where Millsaps will take over. Nice job by the punt team here. That's a, that's a pretty impressive punt, given the footing and the circumstances there. As the sun tries to peek out again here once again. The rain has stopped. That's the good news. once again in shotgun position and handoff will go nowhere I believe Warren's able just to get back to the line excuse me that was Oliver Quentin Oliver in at running back right now Again, goes to his left, has a lot of room, still on his feet, and eventually taken down by Mata and Hover over there as well. But that was good enough for a first down. As Millsaps, under five minutes to go here, with an opportunity to maybe take a shot to take the lead into the half. They're also going to get the ball back to start the second half. So important series here for the majors and a chance to maybe double dip the Tigers without having to play defense so what Clowers comes up with on this first and ten play another draw play to Oliver and taken down by Reese Matthews
second and about six. Clowers with Warren back there now. He's going to throw. Has a man open. And pass complete. Uh, stock roll with the first down play. So under four minutes now. Millsaps moving down the field. They've matriculated well. But they haven't been able to put together a drive that resulted in points. The only time that they had scored was off that 15-yard field possession. And that one on the ground, and Clowers will go down. And officially on the sack there will be Kale Ridge for the Tigers. And a flag comes in, and I'm not sure. It's going to be excessive from either Trinity or Millsaps and might be offsetting. We'll see what they say. The play will count. So that ball just low snap and nothing Clowers could do with it. And then I didn't see long enough afterwards to see the excessive penalty there. So Kadarius Lee and Borges for Millsaps, both receiving unsportsmanlike conduct penalties. That's their first each, so those two gentlemen will need to be careful. The second unsportsmanlike conduct penalty will result in an automatic ejection. And they definitely want to avoid that. Now let's see what they said on the play, because that was after the play was over. So it should be second down, and I don't think he got back to the line of scrimmage. So where are they going to mark the ball? Second down and 10. I'm curious. Maybe he did get back to the line of scrimmage. It didn't feel like it when he when the play was run. So we will go forward from here. So second and 10 now, just on the 48-yard line of the Tigers. The handoff to Warren. And he's going to get a little bit of a push forward from his teammates, but he's taken down by Dodd and Colin Johnson. Two twenty six and rolling down as Boudreau leaves the field. Tigers with eleven. That looks set. Millsaps. They've got their 11. Third and about five. Clowers hand off to Warren. He's got the first down. Well, maybe. That's going to be close, depending on where they spot. I'm going to say maybe a yard short. Looks like it can no longer see the hash marks from my vantage point. You can see them there on the screen. I'm a little lower than the camera, and they just blend in with all the mud. Shotgun position on fourth and one. And timeout taken by Millsap. So their first timeout taken. Minute 29 here in the Second quarter, so right before the half, they want to make sure they've got this completely planned well. As they look to head to the break, Swanee jumping out in front of Austin College now, 14 to 7, 42 seconds left there in the second. And Rhodes and Barry still 35 7, eight minutes left in the second quarter. And it looks like it's almost kickoff time for Center and Hendricks. Taking you around the conference. Of 
There's a couple of teams went undefeated in non-conference action. Barry, Birmingham Southern, Center, these Millsaps Majors in Rhodes, all 2-0 and in non-conference play. Hendrick, Swanee, and Trinity all finish 1-1. One one. Austin College going 0-2 on the non-conference schedule. So they change their mind. They're going to come out and they're going to punt, at least for the time being. And now Trinity will call timeout. And so could be a situation where maybe Millsaps change up their mind throughout the punt team just to see if it could lull Trinity into calling another timeout. If that was the case, the job was successful. Trinity now with just one left. And if they get the ball back, they'll have 90 seconds. A fresh quarterback most likely. And probably a lot of room needed if Millsap is able to pooch this one down. Fourth and one when we return. And so, as expected, Millsaps comes back out with the offense here on fourth and one. That's what they do, the handoff to Oliver. He's got the first down, and he moves forward. And so Millsaps will continue to drive down. Interesting decision for the Tigers, all things considered now. I wonder if Millsaps would have taken a delay of game penalty or tried to pooch on it late on the clock. They come back out with an offensive possession. Trini was ready for it. They weren't lined up in, in punt return. But nonetheless, the Majors, Oliver, has got it again. Able to get the first down. He just bounces around everybody. Reminiscent to the days of Craig Hayward. And he would run, just bouncing around like a pinball off everybody as Oliver. And he just keeps falling forward down the field. Second and about four. The ball's on the ground. And alertly, Quentin Oliver falls down on it. Oh, he'll take the – Millsaps will take their second timeout. And third down now, so we'll see what they've got. 30 seconds left here in the half. You see the Tigers gather around – during the timeout. And top 25 action this week it was Thomas Moore defeating number 16. UW Platteville 35 28. Currently in overtime, RPI and Utica, number 21 RPI and Utica 17 17 in overtime. Yes. Third down and let's say maybe eight for the majors here. Flowers. Puts it on his hip, throws it. It's not going to go for him. Sayobo with the return for the Tigers. And then he loses it after he was down. And so 20 seconds to go for the Tigers. I really don't know what you're going to be able to do here. But the turnover for Trinity, they will take that. This one just slipped out of Clower's hands. Looks like he just never really got a good beat on it. And really Trinity's biggest chance there was to return that all the way. Because now you run into the same situation as maybe Millsaps with a wet ball. But alertly, the Tiger defense avoids giving up points there. And they will take that as 
Wyatt Messix will be in at quarterback. So he comes up throwing. Levine. And clock continues to. Well, actually, the clock's going to stop. They're going to say he got the first down, but then. Jeremy Urban's going to take third and final timeout. 35 yards out. They've got a chance to take a shot here. 15 seconds. Maybe take two if they want. They can run an out route and get out of bounds. That will help them as well. I don't know if you want to attempt a field goal on the field conditions the way that it is. I think you might have better luck trying to play for the corner of the end zone. We'll see how things unfold. Also comes with a bit more risk, as we just saw Millsaps turning it over on the previous possession, trying to score late here in the half. Messix for Trinity, started the first two games. They've had a slight aggravation of injury towards the end of the Harden-Simmons game. It may have been what kept him sidelined to this point, but the injury to wear is Evan McDowell up the middle for a few yards. And the Tigers will have to hurry. Six, five. See what Messix does. So he's going to play it. And he just throws it up to the end zone. And that's going to be thrown out of bounds as the clock expires. So we have reached halftime. And we are knotted at seven. Tigers were at one point over 100 yards total offense. We've had a lot of negative plays in this game. They're back down to 95. Millsaps taking the early lead there. Rushing totals about the same. And time of possession fairly equal, all things considered. And as we head to halftime, see what the majors and Tigers have for us in the second half. We'll rejoin you in about 20 minutes. And thank you for watching Trinity and Millsaps here on the Tiger Network.
And welcome back to San Antonio as we are about a minute away from kickoff for the second half of action. Trinity Millsaps tied at seven apiece. And these two teams have had a knack over the years of having close contests. Last year's contest won by Trinity 28-26. to 26. The year before, Millsaps took a 24-20. In 2013, it was a three-point win for the majors as well. And the infamous four-point win, 28-24, for the Tigers back in 2007 on a play that most major fans would like to hope never happened. Trinity will kick off. Millsaps with the opportunity here early on. And fair catch at the 30 yard line. And Millsaps will take over as a light dusting of rain coming down. And it looks to come and go. Clouds are pretty light behind this wave coming through, and this is just a light rain, so hopefully. Don't have to make any significant changes here. Clowers back for the majors. Quentin Oliver on the handoff. And he's wrapped up quickly by the Tigers. At this point, can't even guess as to the Tigers' numbers can see him on the screen, but again, from my vantage point, just a complete guess on most of these. Wait for the official stats to pop up here and let us know who made that tackle. As we look at second down and about nine. Motion for the majors. Handoff once again. Oliver upended. And the tackle made by Mike Inko for the Tigers. You go the son of longtime, former longtime Tiger assistant coach by the same name. Third and nine now for Trinity. It's going to be trips to the right. Oliver still back in there for Clowers. They're going to go one on one left, and the catch is somehow brought down. Unbelievable catch there for Austin College, and his number is completely obscured. Let's see if we can see it on the front side. Where those number is it 15? Borges, yeah, 15 Borges with the catch. Nicely done. They threw trips out to the right and then had the one-on-one -on -one matchup, and they liked it. Third and long, the majors execute. Crossing midfield now. Offsides on the Tigers. They'll blow this play dead. I will say the rule is nice that you, you have a rule that doesn't necessarily cater to the offense for once, as most rules in college football or football in general do cater to the offense. But just blowing the play dead on the defense all offside like that is going to get take some time to get used to. Um, at the moment, I personally find it pretty annoying. But it's here to stay for the time being. So we'll see. Officially 22 yards on that pass to Borges. Flowers, a little surprised the ball was there. And the pass is incomplete, just out of the reach of Stockel.
Second and five. That one, I, I think you got to call that incomplete, and they will. Got our window open here, and a lot of fans here on the Tiger side yelling for a fumble, but definitely looked like he was coming through with the motion there for the pass. Early action here. Opening drive for the majors here in the second half. Switch it up now. And Jeffrey in that quarterback, probably with just a dry glove. So he moved in quickly, but it's Oliver with the handoff. Be fourth down now. Majors bring in the pump formation. Yeah, keeping the dry hand. It's quarterback by, not quarterback by committee, it's quarterback by whoever's got the glove that uh, isn't sopping wet at the moment. Millsaps gets it away, and that one's going to bounce, hopefully, into the end zone. And Millsaps, a valiant effort there at the very end. See who exactly it was. I believe it was number 22 here. Trying to keep this in. And just, and that had to be a foot over the line if it was. And I believe that was Alvin Joseph racing down there to try to get it. She caught a glimpse of our, our tent there that as we kicked off in the tents for the coaches press box and our two tents for the cameras completely blew away and so the remnants of the, the tent that we have for the final game here as it is completely in, in shattered pass complete to Levine for the Tigers and if you just some indication of the crazy weather Tommy Levine with that's just his second catch today now make it his third. Stats haven't updated. So now three for 66. He did have that 49-yard touchdown pass in the opening quarter back when the field was, I'd say, drier. I don't know if it's gotten drier. Cut back for a McDowell proves that that part of the field's still wet as he slips. And at this point, you just deal with the fields you have and try to move forward. I think the advantage might play into Millsap's hands as Oliver is just more of a straight up and down runner. And he has had some success. McDowell utilizes a lot of cutbacks. And pass incomplete. Rodrigo on defense there on Levine. Second and ten, false start. Looking around at the Millsaps roster, Millsaps owning the state of Louisiana. Looks like about half the team Making the short drive across to Jackson. And that run goes nowhere. And see if they move Davis back and do maybe about three yards. So as we mentioned earlier, Trinity's had quite a few negative plays, whether it be by penalty or just by, by the field of play. Messix, third and long, trying to get this with some air underneath it. 
Steps up. He's going to throw. He's got Stewart. And Stewart breaks the tackle for the first down and still going as he gets to about midfield. They're going to mark him down just shy at the 49, maybe 48. And fantastic play there for a Messix to stay alive. It looked like he might have wanted to tuck and run, but he had Stewart open. We get a good look at the replay. And first down for the Tigers. And the Tigers quick played us here, and it's going to be a first down run for the Tigers. And I believe that was Charles Davis scampering for about 12 yards on the carry. So Ware was three for four on the day for 49 yards and a touchdown. Messick's now three for five for 44 yards. Tigers overall, six of nine, 93 yards. That's not a bad day, all things considered, with this field. The run goes nowhere. And Davis shoved back by Chandler Coleman. Coleman, the senior. Brings up second and 10. Get a good look at the contingent from Millsaps on the far side over there. Very nice turnout, especially considering just the downpour of weather. Davis runs forward for about five. You drive around town here, you will see quite a few cars with the Millsap sticker. His run there is going to be good enough for a first down. Um, Charles Davis just putting in work. So he's going to get replaced now by Evan McDowell. Davis with about 20 yards on those last three carries. Last four, if you count the one that didn't go anywhere. First and 10, hand off to McDowell. He's met right behind the line, and he's going to go nowhere. The play made by Ian O'Brien, senior from Austin. It's as close as he's going to get to a homecoming here. The SAA has expanded their reach over here to Texas. Last year, taking on us and Austin College. And Messick's going deep, has Levine open. He dives, double clutched it, and I think on the second clutch, he uh, just came up empty on that one. And I've got a flag down there, so we'll see what that is all about. All the attention was in the corner of the end zone. Might get man down field from what it looked like, but we'll have to see. From where the flag was dropped, I didn't see anything on the replay that looked to be a foul. So the flag was either thrown in the wrong spot or I just was completely oblivious to whatever happened. Both situations could be equally as true. They are taking their time trying to figure this one out. They say offensive pass interference. And the one thing I could say is, is maybe on number 89 for the Tigers, he completely cleared out, that was Elliot Blot. he completely cleared out his defender as if it was a run block. He cleared him out for a good 10 yards, had him running backwards. That's why I thought maybe there was a man downfield. But it turned out that, that was Blot. So, so that's what they will call. And it all sort of makes sense at this point.
Second and, let's just say, a good distance. Officially 27. Ball on the ground. Picked up by McDowell. He's got a little bit of room to run if he can make it forward. And eventually the tackle made by Millsaps. I'm not even going to guess on the number at this point. That back of that jersey is completely done. Guess maybe 20, maybe 29. I'm going to say 39 as we get a better look with the cameras there. And that was Reed Evans, linebacker from Spring. So third and 23, so officially just a four-yard carry for McDowell. We'll toss out to the side. That's not going to do much for Trinity. Might have gotten back to the line. Complete to Davis, but... And after a good couple of plays for Trinity, they end up going nowhere after the penalty. And they'll be on to punt it off again. The rain starts to pick back up here. Nice spiral punt there. It's going to take a good bounce for the Tigers. And they're going to let that roll all the way down to the two. So they have backed up the Majors pretty significantly. And Millsaps will take over 98 yards to go if they want that touchdown. Get a good look at the punt here. Nice roll. And that is where Millsaps will take over. really coming in, blowing sideways at this point. Direct snap to Oliver, and he's going to maybe get back to the line of scrimmage, maybe fall forward for a yard. It looks like they'll spot him. Look at that angle there. Only about three, so he might have gained a yard. The down and distance marker moved a little bit. I don't know if that's a full yard over there, but enough to maybe get them out of the shadow there. Though he's still going to be back in shotgun here. This is Fitzwalker the third on the direct snap. Takes it and scampers around. And pardon me, this is Oliver again. And it was Walker lined up as quarterback and then the direct snap again to Oliver. And he was one slip away from going the distance. Actually, it was Oliver calling for the snap there. So I beg your pardon. Just had Walker in there in the backfield. And Oliver once again and takes a direct snap and he's got room to go. I think the ball came out and recovered by Millsaps. And so this direct snap to Oliver is working pretty efficiently. Taking the run, the read run play. I don't think there's any option in this one. It's just, he's just trying to find the hole and, and hit it. Garrett Brenneman has been in for most of the day as a lead blocker on a lot of these runs. Haven't called his name for a touch yet, but fantastic job. This is Warren, and he's getting some open space to make some moves and he will scamper ahead for a major first down. And so this drive that started at the two yard line now moving pretty quickly. They approach midfield. See Sullen in the back there. They're trying to practice some 
some kicks. This has become more and more important as we move forward. That pass complete. And J.D. Cook on the reception. Quarterback in is Jeffrey, freshman from Richmond. Again, Millsap's not afraid to mix up who's taking the snap here. He's got Warren in the backfield, and there was some false start there. I think that might be called on Jeffrey. He stuttered his feet as he started to call for the snap. They're going to give it to 61, but realistically the quarterback was moving forward before he called for the snap. So a five-yard penalty, be first and 15 here. Clock ticks away here in the third quarter. Majors had 600 yards of offense last week. And this drive, they'll be looking to crack 200. They're up to 182 before that run. A little bit different defense, a little bit different conditions. They got about maybe a quarter, a third of their production from last week. Trips to the right or just to the left. I think that's Oliver in the backfield. He takes it, goes left, has nowhere to go, and he's forced out of bounds. Take a two-yard loss on the play. Bring up third and seven, third and 15 maybe? Yeah, the second and 13, so third and 15. Star Jill Shelvin departs for this third down play. Fantastic story with Star getting an offer to work at Dell Computer Corporation, the headquarters there in Austin, upon his graduation. Jeffrey's pass complete, and the Tigers immediately force Borges out of bounds. And that's going to make an interesting fourth down play call here because it's about three or four yards to go. I think you're a little too far to punt. And they're going to say fourth and three. So he stepped out earlier. Fourth and three, and as much as we can see through the lenses, I'll try to describe the action here. Jeffrey with Walker back. He's got Ty Durham to his right, J.D. Cook all the way out. Far side is Burgess. Let's bring him in as the up back, and we are going to roll this one down, take a delay of game, so they will definitely bring out the punt team. So not a bad idea. The drive that started at the two will die out here. And now the 42 going in, a little bit of a chance. And Trinity quickly having to do something out here because otherwise the majors might have been able to get the snap off. And a flag's going to be down. This might be a false start. It is. So they're going to back him up even more. So the one thing that this probably does is eliminate the uh, the fake punt opportunity here. Now fourth and 13, fourth and 14. So we'll see him give it a boot. Nice little spiral play, but it's shanked off to the side. And let's see where the ref stop running the 25, maybe the 24, somewhere right around there. We'll get the official the ruling here. As you can just see the rain coming in. It's almost completely sideways. We'll be right back in just a moment.
And welcome back. We'll stay with you as long as we can here. The run around in for the Tigers will be with Blake Johnson comes in at quarterback. And we've got some all-weather gear on some of the cameras out there. I just don't know how much longer they will hold up as you see we've got a lot of rain on the lens itself. Forty-five seconds left here in the third quarter. Messick's back. Fires complete, and he's down on the completion. A lot of extracurricular going on there. They'll have to eliminate that as much as possible. So pass complete for the first down. Thirty-three seconds going. As we take a moment to try to clean off the screen to make this somewhat visible for you. Direct snap to Johnson. Gets the end and cannot turn it upfield. A fantastic closing effort from the majors, Chandler Coleman. And Coleman will help us get to the fourth quarter. So after three, we've played 45 minutes. Trinity struck early. Millsaps capitalized on a bad punt for the Tigers, and we are knotted at seven. Let's take a look at the third quarter metrics here. That's through the complete game so far. Majors still holding just that ever so slight edge on time of possession, but total yards looking a little bit closer now, 194 to 169, and rushing just about even. A lot of negative plays going into that rushing total. So nine penalties for 76 yards. That has hurt Trinity a few times today. Five for 25 for the majors. Trinity just three, uh, excuse me, Trinity two of eight on third downs. Millsaps three of 11. Millsaps also two of three on fourth down while the Tigers are just 0 for 1. Tigers have run 41 plays to the majors 51. But they've gotten a little bit more out of each, 4.1 compared to 3.8 for Millsaps. Millsaps has six fumbles, only two have been lost. Trinity with four, they have not turned it over on the ground. Now the run there from Johnson. And he goes forward for maybe two yards, and he'll bring up a third and six. So Messix will go back in here. And you can see him on the lower corner there with Coach Urban. So a little bit of bring in Johnson for the quarterback keeps, and then bring in Messix to hopefully throw this pass. Maybe some of that is just due to keeping the hands dry. Messick takes the snap, steps up, nowhere to go with it, tucks to run, and he's going to be handled by Vincent Fora. And Vincent Fora knocks him back five yards, so it'll be fourth and ten. And we will play on to the punt once again. And 14 minutes to go and counting, and I think that is going to be what we really need to start focusing on is this field position. And I think each team might have one more opportunity to maybe put together a lengthy drive. But other than that, I think it's going to be more about who can do more with the changeover as they go to defense. Millsap's last possession started at the two. This one will start at the 27. So a little bit of a change there. We'll take a look at the, the punt. Nice and clean on the blockage there. And Millsap's in no way wanting to be close to returning that one. Try to get that camera all wiped off. 13-38 to play here in regulation. I think honestly the last thing the coaches want to do is 
see overtime and have to play any more on this field than we absolutely have to. Walker and Oliver back. Oliver takes the snap, hands off to Walker. So Oliver officially in as quarterback. I guess that's as close to a run read option that he's going to get, whether or not he keeps it himself or if he hands off to Walker. Same situation in the back. What's interesting is to see who's actually calling for the snap. It's going to be Oliver once again. Quentin Oliver hands off to Walker once again and all over it. I believe that's Inko. Mike Inko. Found Walker just as Walker had gotten the ball. And that'll bring up third and nine. Jeffrey in at quarterback for the majors. He's got the only clean shirt out there. He keeps Inko with the pressure. Pass is sent and just past the outstretched arms of Durham. Durham could have come up with that one. That would have been a first down, but it will be another defensive stand for the Tigers. Fourth and long for Millsaps as they bring the punt unit out. Talks about field position. Let's see if Trinity can find anywhere to move forward. That is a nice punt there that's going to sail out of bounds around the 38, maybe the 39. And that's where Trinity's offense will look to take over. This rainfall here just adding to the last two weeks of rain that we've had. Obviously, parts of the country experiencing much more devastating rainfall totals. North Carolina area, South Carolina. In the past two weeks, we've had about 15 to 18 inches here in San Antonio. Evan McDowell about five yards on first down. And given the two weeks that we've had, I think we've had maybe three or four sunny days in that time period. So not really a whole lot for that water to completely soak up. You might have the first few inches of the soil semi-dry that can hold water, but then after that, it's still soaking wet. McDowell, stutter steps, Hell has some room going forward. And he'll finally be taken down by a trio of majors as he crosses midfield up to about the 46. Only a Tiger first down. And with 11.34 to play and counting, the Tigers are in position here. Looking to get something going. Seen Millsaps cross over the field quite a few times today and have their drive stall out around the 30. So we'll see what happens. And McDowell just is more of a natural cutback runner. And I'm just thinking that with this field conditions, it's just not going to favor him if he feels like he needs to cut back. It's just such a hard thing to not try to do. He's instinctively a fantastic cutback runner. And he just has no footing to do so here. And especially in this part of the field. This is where it is the absolute worst. This in the next 10 yards, as you see it, just absolutely torn up. Messick's trying to avoid all of that, throws it up high to Stewart. And it would be unfair to call that a shot put pass. And that's sort of the feeling that it had. So he did not really get a good grip on it, he kind of floated it up there. And bring up third and 10. 
Big play here for Trinity. Got Stewart to the right, Levine to the left. McDowell in the backfield. Extra blockers blot if they need him. Hand off to McDowell. Runs straight ahead, and he picks up maybe four. So fourth and six from the 44. And Urban's going to decide to punt. I think this is the right choice. Ten minutes to play. Your defense has been playing very well lately. And so... Well, three and outs on their last few few go rounds. I think you want to get them back out on the field. If you can pin Millsaps deep here, you've got another opportunity to maybe get your offense the ball back with a much better position. That one might be too much, though. Needs to die soon, and it will. Fantastic punt once again. That one's going to be taken down, I believe, around the three, maybe even further down. Hard to see on the angle. And fantastic job for the Tigers. Exactly what they needed, exactly what they wanted. I thought when this left his foot that there might be too much spin on the ball. And I think that just kind of goes to show just how saturated that field is. Because when it hit the turf, it just lost all of its momentum. And... Looks like the three-yard line there for the Majors. So once again, backed up deep in their own territory. Tigers looking for a loose ball, maybe a safety. It's Walker and Oliver back deep once again. Oliver calls for it, gets it. Hand off to Walker. He goes to his right, or excuse me, to his left, my right. And he is swallowed up there by Bordreau and a few others, maybe Shelvin for the Tigers. Let's see if they officially give both of those guys half a tackle each. And Boudreaux giving the sole tackle there, so not too bad. Oliver and Walker once again. Oliver keeps, looks to his right, and he's immediately swallowed up. So it'll be third and long. Do they even give him a yard? Doesn't look like it. The down marker has yet to move. And the Tigers on the field asking for the fans to step up here. This could be one of the most critical plays of the afternoon as we approach eight minutes and 40 seconds. If they can keep Millsaps pinned deep as Jeffrey comes in as quarterback. Maybe they can force a short punt or even get something more out of it. Jeffrey trying to do more. Hands off. There's a flag down, and this will be huge. False start. They're going to move it back a yard and a half. That's important because now it pushes Millsaps even closer to their own end zone. The... Exchange between center and quarterback here as Jeffrey's lined up back there will be vital. And if they're not able to pick up the first down, assuming if it's an incomplete pass, then the exchange between the snapper and the punter will become even, by, even more vital on fourth down if it gets to that. Jeffrey back there with Oliver. The snap, Oliver takes it, scampers up the middle, and he's laid out hard. On the tackle, trying to see who that is. Number 16 for Trinity. And that's Jordan Williams with the tackle. And I'm going to say that was Andrew Warren with the run. And Jordan Williams with a huge play. He stops Warren a yard short of the first down. So it is now fourth and one at the 12 for Millsaps. They will have to punt this away. The rundo did give the majors quite a bit of room here to work with. Good snap, good punt. Sends up high. Stewart to return. He's got a little bit of room. Goes to his left. If he can turn the corner, he's got more room. And swallowed up nicely there by Drew Hopkins for the majors. And Hopkins not allowing Stewart to turn the corner. But Trinity will get the ball back at the 50. 
with 7.14 as they begin their drive. And the only disadvantage to this is their first 15 yards are in basically the pig pen area of the field. I've been in some pig pens that probably had more grass than that area right there. So good luck to both teams on their footing as this drive is set to begin. We got a little bit of sunlight trying to peek out here now. Messix, shotgun formation for the Tigers. He's got McDowell behind him. Stewart to his right, Levine to his left. Hand off to McDowell. And McDowell will get three or four yards as he lurches forward, maybe to the 47. Second and seven for Trinity. Two things that they were looking to do on this drive. One, try to take up as much of that clock as possible. Don't let Millsaps have another shot. Two, eventually end this drive with points. They can do one of the two. It'll be a successful drive. McDowell spinning it around and not able to do much. They might... Yeah, just slightly move that marker a yard. So now third and six. So we approach six minutes to play here in regulation. Tiger struck early with a 49-yard pass from Ware to Levine on the game's opening possession. That was about five plays in. Tigers held that 7-0 lead for quite a while, but right before the half, the Majors capitalized on a bad snap on a punt, took over possession at the 15-yard line, turned it into two yardage, and turned it into points, excuse me, and we're tied 7-7 cents. Neither team has been able to put anything on the scoreboard here in the second half. We are looking at a fourth and two timeout on the field for Trinity. And I can pull up the scoreboard here. The, as, we, as they approach the end of the third quarter, Barry on top of Rhodes, 42 to 28. Swanee all over Austin right now as they are in the fourth quarter, 28 to 17. And no update from Center and Hendricks as of yet. They were supposed to kick off about an hour ago. So it'll be an interesting decision here for the Tigers. Fourth and two at the 42. They've been playing the field position game for a while, but now with five minutes to go, sort of that in-between time, do you go for it or do you punt it away and play for the field position once more? think that they could be pretty decent with either choice. And Messix is out there again, so they will be going for it. Levine goes far left, and it's going to be Stewart joining him in the slot. McDowell lines up behind Messix. Up block for the Tigers. And McDowell doesn't do it. Oh, and then just dropping what would have been possibly a short touchdown for Trinity. Josh Izzy, the up back. Absolutely brilliant play call. And you just hate to see that for the kid. And I'll be honest, either team, you hate to see a kid drop a pass like that. First and 10 for the majors as they take over. Decent field position. They've started at the 25, the 3, the 3. They have been backed up, but this is a little bit of breathing room. Ball's on the ground, end around reverse. Pitches it forward to number 84. He'll gain about three yards. As First play of the day for Brian McGowan, sophomore wide receiver. So he takes that forward. Maybe we're starting to see a little bit more of the playbooks come out. Five minutes to go in this game. Second. 
run on the far side. It's either Oliver or Warren. I can't tell from here. They're going to say Warren, so first down run for Andrew Warren as they cross midfield. A Tiger is down. Saibu down on the ground. Let's take a momentary pause in the action here, 440. Looks like it might be just a cramp the way that Mark Powell is stretching out the right leg there. things that Coach Urban had said early on in the season. It was the team's goal to fight every game here in the SAA. Felt like last year they had quite a few close contests. Felt like pretty much had some winnable games. We ended up finishing about middle of the pack, losing a few close ones. That was pretty much the story for the Tigers all season. They are wanting to get off to that early 1-0 conference start here. But the bit of a rivalry as the majors came in and started off 2-0 on the season, and they've got the same high expectations. And this one, this rivalry goes back pretty good ways. Teams have been playing each other pretty much since in the early 80s. Jeffrey is going to line up, throw it deep. He's got Borges, and he drops it. Looking for the push off, but don't see that. And then far side, Millsop's looking for the pass interference call, and I didn't see that either. Looked like just a pretty, pretty clear drop. So second and 10, 429 to play. Jeffrey, hands off. I believe that's Oliver. Stuffed pretty quickly behind the yard, behind the original line of scrimmage. Nope, that was Warren. Both Warren and Oliver's jersey are completely covered on the front. When they line up, from my vantage point, cannot see who's who. Gonna be Warren staying in here. Jeffrey has Zach Henley out to his left. Decides to go to his right. And that one's gonna be intercepted by the Tigers. And it's gonna be Maysfield with the pick and the turnover. Field is clean of flags, and it will be Tiger Ball. 339 to play. He will take over. At the 36-yard line. Phil Maysfield, senior from La Jolla, California. So Trinity hasn't had a lot of students from La Jolla play football here. We've had some great ones. Maysfield has put together a very nice career for himself at defensive back. Messick's under center, comes up throwing, has Stewart, drops it. And the ball fell and stuck in the field. At this point, we should just call it a sponge. It's pretty much what it's been. Second and 10. 
Tiger has been pretty aggressive on the play call. Izzy on the up back. McDowell behind Messix. McDowell with the run. Has room if he can break it out. Got the back of the jersey and he'll fall forward. That's about five yard gain. So bring up third and five. And a nice effort there from Evan McDowell to do what he can. Get a look at Tigers there. I'm taking a look at McDowell. My sympathies go out to Quinn Patterson, the equipment manager here for the Tigers. Good luck with the washing of the gear today. Might have to run these through about 10 times. Hand off again to McDowell. Fumbles. It's going to be picked up by Millsaps. They've got room to run. And he is down. That is number 23 on the recovery. That was Malcolm Ben. Malcolm Ben, part of the D3 football team of the week last week. And he comes up with the absolute huge play here for Millsaps recovering that fumble. McDowell with the fumble, Ben with the recovery. And the Tigers have turned it over right where they picked it up. So 36-yard line, Warren scampers forward. He's got quite a bit of room there, and he's inside the 30 to the 25. Two minutes, 40 seconds to go. Tigers with two timeouts, Millsaps with three. Jeffrey, Oliver in the background, he's got it. Scampers forward, swipes out of the tackle, he runs out of bounds, picks up a few more. And Millsaps, 2.05 o'clock stops. Trinity back on their heels now, fighting not only the majors here, but also the clock. off up the middle. He's got room to run and it's Oliver around a bunch of Tigers. I don't know if he avoided the end zone intentionally on that one or if he just lost his footing. Either way he goes down around the three. Can't imagine he'd avoid the end zone at this point. But it does keep that clock running and it is an advantage to the majors as Oliver will head towards the sidelines. Without a doubt I would say the MVP of the majors to this point today. Got 16 for 85, does Oliver. Takes that snap on the knee, and they're going to say he was down. So Jeffrey, before he could hand it off, they're going to say he was down. So back at the 10, and the second and goal from the 10. So timeout Trinity, 56 seconds to play. And I would have to say at this point, Trinity's going to need a turnover. They can force a field goal attempt and hope that it just malfunctions for the majors. But Millsaps in prime position. And if you're Trinity, you got to be thinking, not again. This is pretty much what 2017 was like. Had a couple of teams come in here. We played them close, played them to overtime a few times. Just could not come out on the... Victoria side. But all things considered, second and ten, second and goal to go from the ten. And 56 seconds to play. 
Haven't seen a lot of offense from either team down in the red zone. Millsaps had a chance early. That was denied by the Tigers. And Millsaps was able to punch one in. And I believe it was a sweep run by Walker to his left for the touchdown. It's Warren in the backfield. Borges to the left. Jeffrey in shotgun. Takes a snap. It's Warren. He's met early and taken down. So that will probably force another timeout for Trinity. And it is 49 seconds to play. So third down. Final timeout now for the Tigers. Millsap still has all three of theirs. See so the ball is resting at about the six-yard line. If Millsaps cannot score here, they have the opportunity to kick the field goal. Now the field conditions down in this area still look pretty good. So you'd hope for pretty good footing. This is akin to about an extra point at this point. They need about three more yards for that. And I got it right between the hash marks at this moment. For the Tigers, the big play here is to get the stop. And if they can, try to dislodge the ball. Would be surprised if Millsaps went to the air on this play. They've got Oliver in the backfield. And in fact, they've just got everybody up. Complete stack of the box here for the Majors. They may break somebody out of this. And in on the far side. Hand off to Oliver. He bounces to the right. He's got nowhere to go, and he comes back and he slips down. So that will bring up fourth down. Far hash mark for Oliver. Do not know the preference for Millsap's kicker. 34 seconds counting down. And we'll see what they want to do. I think at any point they will run this clock down to about three seconds, with it being fourth down. Run it down to about three seconds and take their final play, whether it be an attempt for a touchdown or if they decide to try to win this game behind the foot of Hunter Sellen. Let's see. Looks like they are going to go for the field goal as I see quickly the deep snapper on the far side taking, taking some snaps. That's number... 41, Cade Broussard, and Broussard looks to be coming in. So they will be going for the game-winning field goal here. Four seconds left on the clock with the timeout to Millsaps. up on Austin, 28 to 20. Seven minutes to go in the fourth. 42-28, Barry, 10 minutes to go in the fourth. We are here with four seconds to go in the fourth. We are tied. Sellen, looking to send the majors to victory. The snap, the hold, the kick is good. And the majors have defeated the Tigers 10 to seven here in San Antonio. So another game between Trinity and Millsaps decided on the final play. This time advantage to the Majors, and they will start off conference 1-0. Oh. The Tigers they fall to 1-2 on the season, and 0-1 oh and in conference play. A look at the total yards. Not the most impressive as we get a quick look at the game-winning field goal there from Sellen. And for the Tigers, the total yardage for either team not necessarily impressive. Again, if you watched, you understood why. Fantastic effort from both teams. One of those games where at some point somebody's got to lose. Unfortunately for us, that is Trinity. Congratulations to Millsaps on the win. And we will be back here on Tiger Network in two weeks as we host Birmingham Southern. Thank everybody for tuning in today and 
thank our staff of Chong, Sarah, and Ben helping us out on cameras and in the control room. And thank you so much for tuning in. We hope you've had a wonderful day. If nothing else, we hope that you've at least been dry. And for everybody here in San Antonio, I wish you a good day. And if you're traveling, safe travels. Take care.